Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Unplugged with me, Satvik. In today's episode, we are going to discuss on the involvement of the role of a winger in modern day football and how over the last couple of decades, the role has completely changed uh, to what it used to be. Right. So, you know, if, if you would have asked a football lover back in the 90s or even early 2000s, uh, what, who was their favorite wingers and, you know, what would be the role of a winger uh, in a football team? You know, most of these people, you know, would say names like Ryan Giggs or Luis Figo. And, you know, the primarily primary role of these particular wingers was to chip in crosses inside the D for the tall center forward to score some goals. So that was what the classical or the traditional, you know, role of a winger was. But if you now look currently, especially over the last 10, 15 years, the role of a winger has changed completely. Uh, earlier, where wingers were supposed to stay close to the touchline and just shoot up crosses, uh, what we see nowadays, uh, how the role, ha role has evolved, is what we see called inverted wingers. So unlike the traditional uh, formations where the wingers used to stick to the width of the pitch, uh, wingers nowadays or inverted wingers as we call them, usually come inside, usually chip in inside and then probably deliver a cross or, you know, take a shot. So that is how the role has evolved over the last couple of decades, especially. But why has this role evolved and, you know, what changes took place uh, with the involvement of the role is also something that we are going to discuss in the course of today's episode. So if you look back, and this is also something that we've discussed in the videos that we've done on formations in football, uh, early till early 2000s from late uh, from 1900s to even early 2000s most of the team used to play in the 4-4-2 formation right where they were uh, four defenders four midfielders in which two were wide midfielders we could either call them wingers or we could either call them wide midfielders right and then there would be two center forwards or two strikers uh, who would be waiting for uh, crosses from these tall and strong players so that is uh, what used to happen a lot right but with the involvement in the for in the use of formations as well wherein uh, the use of 442 sort of declined and 433 was the formation that sort of started uh, being used by a lot of managers that is where the role of the traditional wingers also changed you know uh, this was something that was you know if if one can say was started by pep guardiola the revolution of changing from the traditional 442 to probably a modern day 433 that we see almost every team playing with so what would what would happen is uh, when pep guardiola played with the 433 in the barcelona in barcelona uh, what would happen is the two wingers which in a lot of case were lionel messi uh, Pedro, Thierry Henry, uh, even David Villa, wherein uh, they, these were the people who were portrayed as wingers on paper, right? But what would happen is both of these wingers would come back alongside uh, the center forward as well. So unlike the traditional wingers, they wouldn't stay wide, but they would come between the two, between the center back and the full back in the half spaces, uh, which would leave spaces for the full back of Dani Alves and Eric Abidal uh, to, uh, to give another option for the team to attack. And we've already discussed how the role of full back has also evolved. Right. So along with the involvement of the role of, of, of the full back, uh, the role of the winger has also changed completely. And this was, in some ways, could also be said, uh, was started by uh, Pep Guardiola when he first took over the reins of FC Barcelona. Right? Uh, you know, some of the modern-day examples or modern-day wingers who've, who are considered as the best in the position are all inverted wingers. Whether it is uh, Lionel Messi or whether it was Ronaldo when he was playing for Real Madrid on the left side of the wing, uh, Mohamed Salah, Hyun Min Son, Eden Hazard when he was playing for Chelsea, all of these are examples of inverted wingers, right? So uh, we we sort of understood what the role is and how the role has sort of evolved, but we would now go deeper into the understanding of how how 
how the position has changed completely wherein uh, even the even how these wingers play balls inside the d has changed and you know uh, the use of the full back has also evolved so we are going to dive deeper into that as well right uh, so in comparison to a traditional winger an inverted winger has multiple advantages uh, multiple advantages for the attacking team right uh, so just just imagine if in a case uh, we are on the right hand side let's let's take example of lionel messi when he played for fc barcelona right what lionel messi would usually do is uh, cut cut inside or come inside leaving space for dani alves uh, to go on an overlapping run what this does is create multiple options for lionel messi to attack right where he had an option to either play the ball to the center forward or to the attacking midfielder of Xavi and Iniesta. He had the option of taking a shot himself and he also had an option to create a lofted cross inside the D as well, right? So unlike probably a traditional winger where the winger had majorly one option was to play a cross inside the D or probably, you know, give a pass back to one of the fullbacks or the midfielder. In this case, the attacking team have multiple opportunities or multiple options when they are attacking, right? And at the same time, we have to understand how this particular cutting inside of the winger makes it difficult for the defending team as well, right? So, uh, let us assume that Lionel Messi takes space between the fullback and the centre-back uh, on the right-hand side of the wing. It creates confusion for the defenders as, uh, in decision making, right? In case the fullback chooses to press Lionel Messi, this would leave space for Dani Alves to go in on, on an overlapping run and leave a lot of space for him even to come inside or, you know, uh, uh, create a very easy goal scoring opportunity. On the contrary, if the fullback decides to, you know, probably stay back, not press and wait, uh, sort of mark the full the opposition fullback and the centre back, the left handed, uh, the left sided centre back comes in to press Messi. Uh, this again leaves a space for the centre forward to drop in between the space behind the left centre back and thus, you know, uh, giving an option to shoot or even create a cutback uh, for the midfielders or for the opposite winger as well. Right. So again, unlike a traditional winger where defenders sort of knew it was either going to be a cross or probably a pass back to the midfielder, uh, this particular role has sort of created a lot of confusion uh, between defenders with regards to who shall commit, who shall hold back and uh, how to stop uh, the opposition team creating goal scoring opportunities. At the same time, another difficulty for uh, defenders here or for the defending team is uh, the in-swinging uh, uh, delivery by the winger, right? Especially in this case, if we are taking example of Lionel Messi, right? What usually happens is uh, when there is an in-swinging corner against the defending team, the defenders usually have to track back or you know run backwards this makes it difficult not for not just for them to sort of analyze the trajectory of the ball but also uh, it gives them less power if they have to clear the ball so a lot of times what we've seen is when there is an in swinger in swinging core uh, in swinging delivery a slight deflection from the defender could also lead to an own goal or a slight deflection could you know give the ball to the attacking team so just as a center back or a full back defending against an in swinging corner it's very difficult to head the ball away from the goal so a lot of times either it would be a corner or sometimes it would just end up as an own goal so for a defending team it may, it, it gets very difficult you know if 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 you take on the contrary the traditional wingers uh the defending team would be facing the ball and they would have the momentum to clear the ball afar, unlike, you know, when there is an in-swinging delivery. So this is again one problem for the defending team when they have to defend against an inverted winger. And even for the goalkeeper, right, uh, when there is an in-swinging delivery, what happens a lot of times is the striker is on the back post and is very close to the goal. This gives the goalkeeper very less time to react, right? Uh, unlike an outswinging cross wherein the goalkeeper has a lot of time to analyze where the uh, striker is going to hit the ball or take the shoot and has more reaction time, um, 
in the in swinging corner it gets very difficult for the goalkeeper to anticipate and in case uh, it uh, the ball the ball goes to the center forward or the striker the goalkeeper has very less chance of reaction right so a lot of times we've seen in an uh, when we have an in swinging uh, delivery to the box the striker would be on the back post and you would usually have an easy tap in from 5 to 6 yards as well and not just this even uh, when a goalkeeper has to commit uh, for an in swinging corner it gets very difficult a lot of times what we've seen is in swinging delivery in the boxes and if and if an if a striker is attacking the ball at the center of the d right and even if he misses uh, the goalkeeper cannot commit right he sort of uh, stuck at his place where even without touching the ball sometime the ball goes to the goal as well so as a defending team defending against an inverted winger is probably one of the most difficult things that a uh, defending team has to do uh, so you know this is these are some of the advantages uh, that the inverted wingers have over the traditional uh, over the traditional wingers and the, the efficiency or the effectiveness of this role uh, you know we can see that over the last 10 15 years whenever we talk about the best players over the last 10 15 years whether it, whether it is a messi or a ronaldo or uh, eden hazard uh, neymar mbappe all of them are inverted wingers right so the the position of an inverted winger has completely revolutionized the sport uh, so this was it uh, this was us understanding how the role of an inverted winger has sort of Uh, evolved over the last 10 15 years and how pep guardiola with his 4 3 3 formation has completely changed how wingers used to perform give me your feedback as to what do you think about the debate between the traditional winger and uh, the inverted winger and if you were a manager of your team uh, if you were managing any top club what would be your priority and would you probably be willing to still play with the traditional winger or you would be going with what is in vogue currently and that is the 433 with an inverted winger Uh, I'd I'd love for you to give a feedback on this, and I and I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think about the role on a whole? Thank you so much, and uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, your support means a lot, and ultimately, your sharing the content, uh, your engaging with the comment will lead to the channel to grow, and ultimately, more informative and more engaging video for you guys as well. Thank you.